Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the new EG4 chargeverter. This is a 48 volt 100 amp charger. It can be adjusted though, so you can go all the way down to 10 amps. It's designed to be used with a generator and you can use either 240 or 120 volt to power the unit. And because of its high charge rate, in a lot of cases it eliminates the need to hook a generator directly to your inverter. And that can eliminate a number of issues because the charge verter doesn't have an issue with generator power. And this is actually the second version of the charge verter. So comparing it to the first version, there's some not so subtle differences like the quick disconnects on the DC and the AC side. The LCD screen is different also, and it is not an obnoxious yellow anymore. That yellow was just so bright, man, <laughs> I don't know. But there's also some other differences you may not have noticed at first glance. One of them being that this has closed communication capability, meaning that this charge verter can actually communicate with EG4 batteries so you can set your charging parameters based off of state of charge. But you can always use voltage as well if you don't have EG4 batteries. Another really cool feature this new charge verter has is dry contact. So it can actually start and stop your generator if it has an auto start feature on it. So it can do everything automatically. All right, so I'm gonna get started here in just a minute. I'll show you guys how I set this up. I'll also show you the older version of the charge verter. So a side-by-side -side comparison between the two. And I'll show you the innards of them. I'll open them both up so you guys can see it. I'm not going to linger on that too long because I think most people that are interested in this are going to be buying the newer version anyway, but I thought it might be neat to glance at both. And then like I mentioned, I'm going to hook it up to the auto start on my generator and see if we can get that cranked up. So this is everything that comes with the charge verter. You've got your AC input cord here, and that has a quick disconnect on it now, which is really nice. So yeah, there isn't any actual wires attached to the charge verter when it's shipped to you anymore. Everything comes separate and it clicks on. And then you've got your DC output here for charging the batteries. And that has 5 16 ring terminals on the one side and Amphenol connectors on the other side that hook into the charge verter. Then they've got some screws here, which I believe, if you look over on this side, you'll see they've got mounting plates here for it. So I think those screws just mount the mounting plate to the unit and then you can screw it onto the wall. Then you've got three different wires here. This one looks like it's for the dry contacts on your generator. This one looks like it may be for, because it hooks up to the RS-485. It looks like it may be for firmware updates in the future. I'll have to look at the manual. And then this one here is for battery communication. But this is another reason why the newer version is nice, because you've got quick disconnects basically for all the different cables, like I mentioned. And the older version came with everything pre-attached, so it was like, wrestling an octopus or whatever, <laughs> getting everything hooked up. Of course, once it was hooked up, it was fine. It's just so much nicer to have that as an option. Nice, yeah, so a lot of similarities like I was mentioning before, but there is some differences here. See these straps that they have to hold everything in place? The last one here, the older version, Sometimes some of these would rock out. I actually did a video on it or mine was detached right here and slightly slid out and so the unit wouldn't function or if it did sometimes it would only charge at 50 amps instead of 100 amps. So some of the same components obviously like breakers, some of the wiring, but then you do have this communication like I mentioned before the RS-485 and the RS-232. So you're going to have some different circuitry there. Also, the modules look to be different. The old ones had one fan each. The newer ones have two fans per module. So yeah, overall, it looks like a really nice build. I'm going to get this back together and then start testing it on the wall here in just a little bit. And I'm going to mount the charge verter right here, and then I'm going to go through a grommet right in here through the wireway into the battery. So as of right now, with these cables that I have right here, they have 5 16 lugs on them. So they are not going to be able to hook directly up to the Pro battery. That's something EG4 is working on right now to make it easier. But in the meantime, I'm going to hook up to two bus bars with the extra cables that came with the Pro battery. And then I'm just gonna hook to the bus bars from the charge verter. So for testing, that'll be pretty simple. Next, I'm gonna hook the communication cable, the RS-485. I'm gonna hook it into the Pro battery as well.
Check this out, guys. State of charge, 59%. So we've got closed loop communication to the charge verter here. Very neat. Okay, cool. Well, I am going to set up the AC inlet here, the AC input, so I can get the generator hooked up. And again, this is a quick disconnect here. I don't have too much space over here on the right, but this should just click in. Yep. Cool. Well, that was easy. I was expecting a little bit of a battle or to have to jerk it around one way or another, but clicked right in. So I'm gonna plug this into an extension cord I have for now into the generator. And then I'm gonna get the dry contacts and see if I can hook that up also to my generator. Several days later. So here's my generator, it's a Duramax. They call it a 9000, but it's essentially a 7200 watt on propane and that's what I run it on here. Let me show you the auto start, the dry contacts for this thing. Sorry if there's a glare here, but see, this is the dumbest thing ever. This is the dry contact for this generator, and they've been promising a cable or a connector for this for a couple years now, and I guess it's just never gonna come. So I was trying to buy one off of Amazon that I could get that would match this. So I've been through like four different heads so far, and uh, yeah, it's very irritating. They still have not come out with anything. So I'm gonna keep trying to get ahead, but in the meantime, I'm just gonna splice into, I've already checked and I know which two uh, parts of this connection I need to hook into to get the dry contacts to work. So here's my solution for now, don't judge me guys, but just some butt splices hooked into the correct terminals. And uh, that should work for now. I'm going to have victory though. I'm gonna find the head on Amazon for this and be able to splice it in clean. All right, everything should be hooked up and ready to start the generator test. So the voltage you can see is 52.4%. The current zero, because we're not charging with anything yet. State of charge is 73% because we have battery communication hooked up, we can know that. So then when you go into the menu here, you can see I have my charging voltage set at 56 volts. The state of charge start is at 63%. So we're actually gonna have to raise that if we want the generator to kick on. So it has to be at least equal with what you've got. So I've got 73%, so we can raise that in just a second. In the meantime though, you can see here, you can use voltage to start it as well. That's set at 43 volts right now. The current's at 10 amps, and we can raise that as well once the generator starts up. And then it has state of charge stop at 90%. So you don't have to charge to 100%. You can set at that. As long as it's above your start, you can set it at whatever and then stop as at 54 volts. So let's raise this here and see if it kicks the generator on. We'll go to here and go to 73%. Yeah, we're on. Cool, yeah, we're on. I had to go out there and check, and as soon as I walked out to the generator, it clicked on. So there we go. So we're right at 60 amps coming into it. We can check the battery here. Yeah, 61 amps it reads coming into the battery right now. So let's raise this up to 100 amps and see how well the generator handles it. Huh, so when you reset the value, it resets the soft start and then starts from the beginning again. Okay. So it'll probably take a few minutes to climb all the way to 100 amps, but that's better anyway. It doesn't put a huge inductive load on your generator just throwing 100 amps at once on it. All right, I took sound canceling off on my mic and I wanted to get close so you guys could hear the charge burner. I moved the generator a little further away. I had a pretty short dry contact cable to be able to test the auto start. But after that, I just moved it a little further away so you guys could hear the actual sound of the charge burner. If you guys had ever heard the yellow version, it was definitely louder than this version here. But there is 
as you saw in those modules, you have two fans each. So now you have four fans rolling in this thing here because we're pumping nearly 100 amps into the battery. Very cool. I like what they've done with the new version here. So we're already at 80% state of charge on the Power Pro battery. So I did want to talk about the fact that the charge verter can run on 120 volts like I mentioned before. And this is an answer to a question that a lot of people are still asking me about the EG4 6000 XP. They, I still get questions pretty frequently about whether it can run on 120 volts. So people that have 120 volt generators uh, want to be able to power the 6000 XP. But yeah, this would solve that problem because the charge verter can be supplied with 120 volts without an issue. So yeah, you can still charge your batteries up, let the 6000 XP do its thing without a problem. So in reference to the 120 volt input to the charge verter, I thought it might be easier just to jump over here and show you guys. So here's the cable that comes with the charge verter. The head on it is set up for 240 volts from the generator, and this is a NEMA 1430 head on it, is what it's called. So there's a diagram in the manual for the charge verter, and I can leave a link in the description below to the charge verter, and you guys can take a look at the manual and it shows how to wire this into a 120 volt plug so that's option number one you can take this off and just put a standard receptacle end on here and it'll work with 120 volt input from a generator option number two is you could create your own whip so this is a 1430 female end here and that could plug into this and this can plug into a standard wall outlet so then you would have both options if you ever needed to this could still plug into the generator with 240 volts, but you have a 120 volt option as well. And it's not very difficult. Like I said, this is a 10 gauge wire here, a standard, standard receptacle end, and this is a female uh, NEMA 1430 end. So I could make a video on how to make one of these whips if you guys need it, but I, it's not that bad. Like I said, just look at the manual and I think you guys can work your way through it pretty easily. So like I mentioned, I really like the new additions to the charge verter that they've done. They did a great job. And I've got a lot of other cool stuff coming up soon. I appreciate you guys watching and stay tuned.